Okay, we're almost there. Where we're almost there to the end of the chapter. Okay, so this last portion of chapter one is what happens if I change units. So I need you to go to page 16 of your notes. And I want you to bring out your handy dandy calculator and enter this data into, can you please put it into your L1? And then answer all of these questions. Find the five number summary, the IQR, and the standard deviation. Remember the IQR is your Q3 minus your Q1. So that means you got to do it yourself. There's your math. Now remember in order to get here, I've get entered it. I'm just going to go stats over the calc, first vars. I'm going to put first variable, first var. And here is all that information that I have written here. No interpretation necessary because they didn't ask. Now the next thing they say here, again, um, I didn't mention this, I should have. These are the salaries of the Atlanta Braves in the year 2011. So they were given a, let's say that they were given a bonus that each player received a bonus because that's really important. And with them being given a bonus, they were given a bonus of $100,000. Would be nice. Now I need to recognize what's happening up here is that is in terms of millions. So I have to convert that 100000 to millions to make that, what, make that point one. And now I need to plug all of this information in my calculator, but this is how I'm going to do it. Now there's two ways to do this. The hard way, which means add point 0.1 to each of these values, or I can take my calculator. I need to highlight L2, and I'm going to go point 0.1 plus L1 and then press enter. And now here are all my new values. And you can see here, here's 14 million plus there's your 100,000. Here is 9.1 million and then adding that to that. So that's 9,200,000. And then of course, all you're gonna do is go to first VARs. I'm gonna make this the L2. And then you're gonna calculate. And now you're gonna write all those values down because they ask you to do it again. Write down the mean, the five number summary, the IQR, and the standard deviation for this new group. Now, I put mine in my L1, and I would appreciate if, I mean L2, L2. I would appreciate if you would put your bonus in um, your L2. I'd also like my bonus in cash since we're at it. But anyway, so go ahead and put it in your L2 so that you and then get these values. Now, here are the values you have, and then they said, what do you notice? Well, compare that 6.3 to that 6.2. Compare that 0.514 to that 0.414. Okay, let's look at something else. Let's look at that maximum value compared to that maximum value. I'm seeing that everything seemed to increase by 100,000, which is equivalent to 0.1, when each player, each player, that's the key word, got a bonus. But wait for it. Uh-oh. It also looks as if the standard deviation does not change. Well, why is that? Hmm. We're going to have to look into that. Now, let's take a moment to highlight it. All values increase by 0.1 million, but... I don't have much room here, so I've got to slide down. Your standard deviation and your IQR. Hmm. Well, why is that? It's because everything just shifted. That's all that happened. Okay. Here, 
as I look at these numbers, these, this number shifted over 0.1, this number shifted over 0.1, all of these numbers shifted over 0.1. So it's like I take this top right here, and if picture this top is, represents a bunch of values on that top. Well, I'm going to add something to each of those values. So if standard deviation and the interquartile range measures variability, What's going to happen now is I'm going to add, add, let's say add 1 to all values that you see here, imaginary numbers. What's going to happen? Everything is going to shift. Notice that everything shifts by whatever the number I put, but what happens to my variability? It's the same. My range is the same. My interquartile range is the same. And that's what this represents. So when I see this, I see it as a shift. And of course, that's going to work if it happens this way, or if for some reason your salary gets decreased, unfortunately, everything is going to shift again. So your, your salary is going to increase by whatever dollar amount, because everybody got a deduction. Everybody got a deduction. So let's say everybody got a $50 deduction. Well, that means... Well, now everybody's new salary is going to be $50 less. Everybody. So if we take the average of the new salaries, it's $50 less. But the standard deviation, remember, all it does is move it from left to right, but it does not make it wider. IQR does not make it wider. The variability does not change. So now let's look at the next one. Now, as we read this one, this is extremely practical. Each player received a 10% bonus. What does that mean? That means where, whatever their salary was, here's your 10% bonus, but their new salary is now 110% more, is 110%, a, is a their new income. And I am going to show you the work on this, but before I do that one, I want to show you something that's a ease, is more visible. So let's say that for this um, franchise, instead of giving them a 10% bonus, let's say they doubled their money. So we're going to put this one to the side. I need to do another one as I make up my own. So I'm actually going to put this in my L4. So let's say that their income was doubled. So now if the income is doubled, remember this person made 15 million, 14 million, 9.1 million. First of all, I'm going to clear out my L2 just because I want to. And for the sake of consistency, guys, just go over to your L4. And as I look at my L4 right here, I am going to double my L1 because remember, this was my L1 right here. So I can sit there and go 30,000, excuse me, wrong. 30 million, 28 million, what, 18.2 million, et cetera, et cetera. But no, think smarter, not harder. I'm going to go two times my L1 and then press enter. And now here are my new values. And as I look at these new values, here are the numbers that I said verbally, but it does it for all of us quick, quickly. And now I'm going to go to stat, go to calc, first vars. I'm put make it my L4, calculate, calculate. Now let's look at what's happening here. Now we have our new mean value. Let's compare it to our original, 6.2. As I slide down, I got my standard deviation. Ah, standard deviation before was 5.7. Well, what's 5.7 double? Just asking. Um, here's your minimum. That 4. Point, I need to slide. There we go. That um, that value right there, 0.414 mil, doubling it. Where to go? Where to go? Where to go? Minimum. It's right there. So go ahead and write all those numbers down. And as you write all those numbers down, be prepared to tell me what do you think happened. Now here are all the values, and don't forget calculate your IQR. You got to do that yourself. But here are all the numbers. So. In this case, when we doubled everyone, and I do mean everyone's salary, all values doubled. All values doubled. That would be pretty amazing if I can get a double salary. And do the same thing. Oh, yeah. 
Now, I want to go back and do the original question. The original question is here, well, what about if we increase everybody by 10%? Now, let's remember the math behind this. Okay, I'm increasing the salary by 10%, which means your new salary is going to be 110% of what you have now, which means that you've got your original salary plus your bonus because the 10% is only your bonus. So for those of you who are thinking, well, that doesn't make sense. Why is it 110%? Let's say you make an allowance of $50 and your parents say you're going to get a 10% um, um, increase. So let's 50 times 0.10. Does that mean that you're only going to get your new allowance of $5? No, that means you're going to get $5 more. So instead of doing it this way, you could have gone 50 um, times 1.10 because that, that includes your existing allowance plus your bonus to get the $55. That is your new um, allowance. So that's where that 110% comes from as I go back. Now here I'm going to go stat put that into edit. I got it in my L3. Just like I did it before, I'm doing it again now. I'm going to type in 1.10 times, again, my L1. That's what I'm comparing it to. And here is my new data. And then after I have that data, I'm going to go to stat, calc, first var, okay, and I am in my L3. And that is where all these numbers came from. And I stopped writing them down, so I'm just going to put an et cetera on there. Okay, so now notice I put this in my L3. Here's the data, like I said, et cetera. But when they ask you what did they notice, what did you notice? All the values increased by a factor or multiple, you want to say, of 1.1. And if you don't believe it, do the math. Divide your 6.8 divided by the 6.2 and you'll see it's a differential of 1.1. So as we look at all of this, what does all of this mean as we just break down what truly happens? Well, when we add or subtract the same number to each, each, each observation, because that's the key. need to highlight that. Okay. Basically, nothing's, it, what's going on is exactly what I was showing you before. It's a shift. Okay. It is shifting by a fact, by um, a something, shifting by a, a value of N, one way or another, if you're adding or subtracting. And all of them shifts, but the thing is, going with the standard deviation thing again, picture some numbers on here. All these numbers I add something to, they move. All these numbers I subtract something, they move. Okay? So, remember, shifting. Add, they move. This is just a bunch of list of numbers. They move. All you got to do is look at the list on your, um, also in your calculator. Now, what happens when you multiply or divide observations. Well, here your min, minimum, everything, everything increases by a factor of n. Everything increases by a factor of n. And we've talked about this before, but let's keep going with this. Let's, re let's do a, um, I'll be honest, I don't know why I have this in the notes again. I don't know if I put it in prematurely before, but Good review. So what does resistant mean? Because this is a good um, um, opportunity. Does not affect. Now, when the idea of resistant for this versus what we did before, see, before we added a value, just one value to the end. With this here changing the units, everybody got a raise. Would be nice. Well, that's what happens, I guess, for us teachers at, um, around sometime in October, November-ish. Everybody gets a raise, not just a, a select few when it comes and so this is not applicable to the idea of res resistance because with resistance it's just one person one person and one person alone got that bonus okay here 
which are resistant to extreme values? Well, the idea of I have, if I give one person a bonus, the median, the IQR, and all the five number summaries are resistant, are not affected by extreme values or outliers. Okay? And finally, what are not resistant, meaning what are affected by outliers? All the time, our or extreme values, it is our mean and our standard deviation. So, and this is a hard concept, so you might have to rewind and listen to this a few more times, and it's going to be... We're going to talk about this again in the upcoming chapter, so, in chapter two. So, have a good day. You guys have got your homework. Bye-bye.